Thank you for the invitation, the opportunity to be here on what's really a very beautiful day in New York City. So, um, so I'm enjoying it. Uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to come and speak to what looks like a very interesting and diverse audience, and I'm sure an audience with many questions, about our efforts in Iraq, and particularly, um, as I was asked, to try to focus on sort of how we see things uh, going forward. And I'll be happy to do that, but I thought what I would do is start uh, with a little bit of uh, context in terms of uh, what we have been doing, how we've been uh, operating, and then sort of the kinds of changes uh, that are taking place. Um, as you know, you know, the brief history of the last several years, um, we did, as was mentioned, uh, op reopen our embassy in 2004. At that time, we returned sovereignty uh, to Iraq uh, and really began to try to uh, work in the background to help Iraq stand up. Uh, unfortunately, as you also know, uh, Iraq then experienced a very difficult period, a period of considerable violence, um, and so we had to reassess our approach to assisting Iraq, uh, which is what happened, has come to be called uh, the surge. Um, and fortunately, through a number of factors, and I'd be happy to discuss those with you uh, during the Q&A if you'd like, but a number of factors came together and I think really did begin to stabilize Iraq. And, and so the Iraq that exists today, uh, I think, is now actually on a pretty solid path of stability and, and uh, progress. And I, and I think the institutions are, are doing well, um, and I, I think there's great hope uh, for Iraq's future, not to, to downplay the seriousness of the problems that Iraq still faces, and that's what I'll, I'll really focus uh, my remarks on. Get involved and help Iraq. 
And so by no means would we see ourselves as like the evidence almost, or in any way being made to play it. We really think that a number of other players should be able to play a key role uh, in helping Bob and address the challenge they And let me just lay out a few of those. One area uh, that they're currently focused on, and they are a democratic society, that important area, that is the effective national election analysis part plan for January and next year. This is an election to the council of representatives, that council of representatives will elect prime minister. Uh, it's up really the national leadership uh, is up for election or re election. Very interesting project because it follows uh, on the heels of what just happened last January when Iraq had provincial elections. And the provincial elections, for those of you who may follow Iraq in some detail, uh, would be aware of provincial elections were a very interesting exercise and a very interesting outcome. Because what happened in the provincial elections, they changed the system quite but in a very positive way. The system became Basically, what it means is the candidate's name is here on the ballot, and you can actually select the candidate to vote for. Close with this how they had held the previous election. One in which the party lists the people that they had on their plate, but the party determines which ones get elected. Number one, number two, three. Open list system, you can choose number six, number seven, and vote for that person. So what happened is there was a much greater uh, deal of accountability in the provincial election. But the general result was that those the incumbents tended to lose because the voters felt the incumbents were not doing enough to help them provide service to do the things they want the government to do. That was kind of a wake-up call for us politicians, that they really are now being held accountable. So now looking forward, the Iraqis will have their national election. Okay? Not yet decided which system they will choose. Again, the old system that you can use for national election. Now, five, closed list system. A lot of people are advocating for an open system, which fundamentally changed the outcome of the election. It would also, we believe, have the positive impact of causing party, a broader base, in other cities, some less monolithic party, less sectarian base, single base party, they would be looking for a broader mandate than an open system. So we think that would be a positive in terms of the broader development of it. So we'll see how the Iraqi handle that. It's entirely their decision. Uh, but there is the prospect that if this system comes into place, which would fundamentally change kind of the electoral dynamic of the country. The second issue which is currently in play uh, in Iraq, but it's very important for the long term of stability, is resolving what's called the dispute of internal boundaries. Now again, a bit technical and those who follow Iraq closely might be familiar with the issue. Uh, but a remnant from the previous days when Saddam was in power and the Turks and Egypt had a kind of a chronic area that enjoyed there's a series of, of areas along the border between what they think is the dominant culture and the culture. And it's not yet clear where those, those areas should end up because they end up in the end up And it's a point of some contention between the Kurdish north and the Arab and the south. Uh, and it's important that that be resolved, but that it's resolved peacefully. Uh, and the UN has taken a seat on that, uh, and they've recently released a series of reports that sort of analyze history and demographic politics, geography, that whole area, as a means to try to get the parties to sit down and talk about the uh, And since that time, they've 
you as you as as a team, uh, who said to me first represent the first that we felt and represent your culture. Probably felt that uh, as a national government. To begin to discuss how to resolve these issues. So it's still a contentious issue, but it's one in which the parties that have faith are discussing them trying to work on something by the team. So as difficult as it has been to now very much time form a government in place, that it, it is being added to the party. Another issue that Iraq really needs to address uh, is reconciliation uh, among the community. Uh, now the political institutions are providing one mechanism for doing it. Uh, they do now have to work together in the parliament. They have to work at the same uh, They do have means by which now various institutions to cooperate with uh, the country. So there are some uh, elements in place. But there are also a, a number of uh, remnant issues that really have not yet been resolved. One is uh, how to implement the evacuation. Previous regimes, the regime. The question is, what should be sanctioned if any, and what level of official Trump should be? And for the Sunni community, which is also a factor, is looking for a more liberal approach or forgiving approach, so to say, towards the former backers. And the other thing is, Kurds and Shia suffered considerably at the end of the uh, Dutch, uh, our Dutch support Trump. So they really need to work out you know, what will be the appropriate approach to do those decisions. Uh, there has been devastation legislation in the past. Uh, it's been slow being implemented, but it's been back to start. There has been amnesty legislation in the past. The amnesty would apply to those who may have passively participated uh, in part of the insurgency, uh, not those who actually committed criminal acts of violence and those who may have passively divided the vote in some other way. The past supported them uh, who are operating against the government. Uh, that legislation has been passed, but again, the implementation is back. So there are a number of areas in which they really do need to get a reconciliation strategy so that that past, that, that tragic chapter of our past history um, can be put, put aside dealt with and so forth. Uh, a third area that I think Iraq is going to really begin to have to face this year um, is the return of displaced persons. Uh, you may be aware that because of all the violence both back in the 90s again, I had to see tomorrow about the violence in 2006, but there's been a lot of displacement of Iraq both internally in the country and also in the neighboring country. And so there are estimates of over 2 million Iraqis who are currently displaced. Well, as conditions in Iraq improve, and they are improving, uh, the conditions are arising under which we can't return. But there are a number of factors that will affect their ability to really return. Uh, the festival may not be stabilized in other ways, uh, not, not be able to successfully return. A lot of issues have to do with property, a lot of property issues, property. Uh, there are issues of services. People need to be able to have electricity and water and basic services for them to be able to do the consumption of those who are still lacking. Uh, employment, there needs to be something for them to be back where they're doing like life. There are a number of issues besides security that are present. Security has gotten back less uh, around the country. Security is not uh, a significant factor in But the other factors that I just outlined really are the ones that need to be addressed in both We can and want to return to be able to So again, I think this year is going to be a significant year for Iraq that issue. Uh, another issue, the next issue that they really do need to address for, for the for the well being going forward is to get their hydrocarbon sector worked on. They have significant oil and gas, second largest oil, oil significant gas. And those 
of woefully underemployed right now. There are still several uh, from the effect of what happened in the of the decade, and speaking of the 90s, of the 1990s, uh, and the fact that they have not yet got their framework against their legislative framework for organizing the oil sector. Uh, and as a result, they're not benefiting from the kind of income they could be having if they had five had five sectors. Uh, a lot of the uh, challenge there uh, is getting agreement between Kurdistan regional government in the north and central government in Baghdad on the framework for exploiting Iraq by the part of the The east side has a different view as to who should have ownership benefits, how it could be obligated. And they've been kind of at a standstill for a couple of years. Uh, and so we and others have been trying to provide technical advice and expertise to help them figure out the best way forward. Uh, but meanwhile, they've been losing significant potential revenue, which in today's market they really do need, uh, that could help them address some of the fundamental problems that they face. Uh, and so it's an urgent issue for them now to address it. We're beginning to see some evidence of uh, uh, forward movement in the recent uh, history uh, an agreement with the exporting 100,000 pounds of oil a day out of Kurdistan. That sort of represents the first major step forward in getting the central government in Kurdistan on how to give it to the doesn't solve all the problems. It sort of represents a goodwill step by both sides to say that we do this one on the question. And Iraq's current budget situation, they're running about $10 billion investment here, um, does argue that they could sort of try to begin to better the type of uh, that they have. Uh, another area, a fundamental area that I think about really now is moving to the point where it's beginning to address. It's the kind of fundamental economic form or structure that really needs to happen for Iraq to successfully develop its economy, back to the to develop the kind of employment and other uh, economic support that the Iraq needs to go forward. Uh, Iraq has had and has inherited uh, a typical state of centralized, uh, top down kind of uh, economy. Um, you know, the typical more so a country that kind of economy has had, uh, and it hasn't really yet fundamentally sort of restructured that economy. Um, and so they still have a significant government subsidies for specific things, like food rations, which is very inefficient, uh, but it's something that you know, they want to keep the company to rely on. They subsidize a number of essential services, fuel, food, and, and frankly, many services are essentially free and electricity based on um, And that's a tiny efficient way to run the economy. Uh, and so they really do need to figure out how to construct a lot of economic incentives uh, so that they can get an economy which is delivering for the people in an efficient way and not currently. The way it currently is operating is very inefficient and wasteful. Uh, along the same line, they need to structure investment machines. They need a lot of farm investment to open the farm investment. They try to encourage farm investment. Uh, but investors don't get the kind of infrastructure, the legislation, kind of investment infrastructure that they would want to see before they're prepared to put the money. And the Iraqis recognize that. So they're trying to work out ways in which they can put together a package uh, that ensures investment, that they have a lot of secure, they will be adequately adjudicating the differences, people, investors will be able to realize the cost, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the kind of thing that in the past they haven't really had to deal with. They do recognize going forward that development. Uh, they also really need the organized employment sector. Right now, most, the, the greatest amount of employment in Iraq, uh, more than half of all Iraqis have jobs, work with government. Uh, and 
that's not a way to prevent you from talking. But ultimately, they're going to have private advice to make it much more efficient. You have the kind of efficiency, the kind of entrepreneurial activity that they will need. They still have significant payload enterprise, large payload that are quite insufficient. They recognize that. They realize that the short term you can't immediately just cut this lot of employees that not going to succeed that way. But ultimately, you do need to be able to address the fact that you have inefficiency in the public sector employees. Now, we're, happy, we're helping with that. A lot of international players are helping a lot. Uh, ultimately, they're just going to have to sit down and figure out what is the best way to work on it. So, it's going to benefit a lot of people. On the economic front, they also have legacy issues they need to address. Uh, one is debt overhang that they still have stuff. Uh, they, they, they managed to get rid of a lot of their debt to get rid of other mechanisms. But some of their immediate neighbors. Still have significant things, still have significant debt in those things, uh, and they need to work that out in order to ensure it doesn't other uh, that Iraq has fiscal responsibility to maintain the place uh, so that they can uh, get involved in the without worrying about the claim assets of And similarly, claim in terms of the victims of the former regime. Uh, a lot of them uh, are holding claims against the rock. The rock really doesn't address the claims. Uh, so that again, the international community can that we'll see a rock that the country does have a good credit situation uh, and is a good place to support them. There are a lot of elements involved in the rock economic challenge uh, that the rock community can address and that we're eager to help. Uh, and finally, let me just mention um, that Iraq's diplomatic statement uh, has also been very important and has really improved significantly uh, in recent months. Uh, and you've had a lot more international activity, diplomatic activity between Iraq uh, and its neighbors, that neighbors have been over again, Baghdad, that Baghdad was a country with foreign ministry. Jordan has there trying to fill up the nearby state of Iraq, and likewise in the Iraqi officials. And that's been a very positive and a very healthy development, both for Iraq and for the region. If you think back uh, to the recent history of the region, Iraq really was the opposite side of the country. Iraq was the religion of the country. It was the country which seemed to be stabilized, and it was stabilized uh, in the region. That is now fundamentally changing, and Iraq really is being used as a country bringing stability to the region, it's good behavior uh, to the region, and it really is being seen more and more now uh, as a country which can help the region move forward. And we're obviously very supportive uh, of that effort as well, that we are helping Iraq in terms of developing diplomatic connections. Um, I might just go back and just reiterate that uh, as we move forward, uh, we will begin to see the withdrawal of American troops. Significant numbers, if not yet the much withdrawal, that will be subsequent. And as I mentioned, by the end of 2011, those troops will be out of the lives of the But at the same time, as that goes forward, on the civilian side, we will be maintaining a very robust base throughout Iraq to address exactly the kind of issues that I've been discussing, uh, where Iraq still needs support in terms of governance, uh, in terms of economy, in terms of civil society, all the kinds of, of social and governmental capacity building that have been lacking that we are committed to continue uh, to apply. That means we will be a we diplomat with the first of the government throughout that period to that headline in both the military and strong uh, civilian side of our church architecture will continue to be a robust effort. Uh, and we do for that with the Calgary American Academy of Architecture around the country, 
these teams basically are staff, subject matter experts that are appropriate to the areas where they're operating. Urban area, it might be an urban uh, issue expertise. Rural area, have an agricultural expert. Uh, the kinds of, of experts that we can to help uh, the that program, the yeah, program, will continue in a very robust way uh, going forward for the and help uh, to Iraq government. Anyway, I think let me uh, stop here. I don't want to take all the time uh, to talk after that really much about the questions are and have a discussion. So, again, thank you for coming. I'm glad somebody can come to the next one here. Thank you for the invitation. And I